yay, ho, yay, ho, yay. I'm performing at the Phoenix Artists Club here today. God save the Queen. I'm David Mills. I'm the host of The Mix with David Mills at the Phoenix Artist Club. It has risen from the ashes, let me tell you. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's been completely refurbished in the past few years, and uh, it's uh, a real hot spot for Soho in the way it was when it opened 30... How long ago was that? 88. In 88, so over 30 years ago. It's just got such a great uh, bohemian sort of edge and uh, the clientele are exactly the type of people I want to uh, showcase at the mix. It is a mix. It's all sorts of people. Uh, West End uh, stars, uh, people from the theater, people, creative people, people from Soho, um, and some of the underworld, a whole mix. And uh, that's what we're trying to showcase on the show. Our world is becoming increasingly homogeneized. Is that a word? Homogenized. Homogenized, exactly. And if you walk around Soho, you walk around the West End, every other shop is a Pret or an Eat or another chain that you've seen a million times before. Now we're presenting something completely unique, completely different, a different slant, a different idea, and I think people are really going to respond to it. It is quite a risk, but you know, uh, I'm a huge fan and connoisseur of U.S. talk shows. Uh, and uh, this kind of talk show was much more uh, frequent on the U and when I was growing up in the U.S. So you would see uh, David Letterman show, Mike Douglas, even Johnny Carson was quite risky at times in a way that the current shows aren't. And I thought, let's go back to that idea. And uh, so this is this is the result. Big question, million dollar question is, when will the POTUS be sitting there? <laughs> Uh, well, let's wait and see. It's, uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll shoot for that, but uh, watch this space. Welcome to the Phoenix Arts Club, London's premier Bohemian Members Club. It's the inaugural episode of The Mix with David Mills presenting our celebrity guest for tonight, comedian Joe Sutherland. Jonathan Pye! Writer Amy LeMay! Introducing your host for the most, David Mills! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, you can hear this. This is on. Yes? 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 No, no, no. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Anyway, people, please put your hands together for Tony Appleton, the Royalist. travel through this evening together, <laughs> right? And a round of applause for the Phoenix Artist Bar. <laughs> literally, literally, my favorite bohemian fire trap. <laughs> Absolutely, no, really, really. And I've been in all of them. I've been, seriously, that's my career, fire traps. So, I really only play in venues that are a little bit life-threatening. <laughs> And it's so great to be in London's glittering West End. It's a great show. You know, I'll tell you, I've noticed something in London's glittering West End because I'm often playing out and around all, you know, zone four, five, six, and all the other zones. And, um, you know, what I've noticed about coming into town is how many homeless there are. You know, I've been in London for 17 years and I literally have never seen it this bad. And I'll tell you, I always try and give whatever I have and I don't have that much. Um, so I give a, a bit of change or whatever I have, and I encourage you to all do the same. But the one thing I would say is do not pick up the big issue. <laughs> because the big issue is shit. <laughs> have you seen it lately? Have you seen it lately? It's terrible. It needs a total refresh. It really does. You know what I've always said about the big issue? You know what it really needs? Competition. <laughs> right? 
Seriously, where's the publication for the younger, sassier, homeless person? <laughs> I have, I have come up with an alternative. Homeless people, they can read it, they can also sell it. It's called We Beg to Differ. Now, <laughs> different content, you know what I mean? Younger, sassier, kind of like um, homeless celebrity news. Right? Find out what Macy Gray is up to. Things like that. <laughs> And this is where I think it really takes off. I love this idea, misconnections. Mis -con you know misconnections? Do you know that, my dear, misconnections? That's my favorite bit in any newspaper. That's that little bit in the paper. Like Sometimes you see it in the metro, like, oh, I saw you on a Saturday night across the street, but I didn't have the nerve to go up to you and say hello, so I put an ad in the paper. Maybe you respond to the ad, okay? Right? It's how these two met, probably. Right? <laughs> misconnections, right? Another misconnection success story. I think misconnections for homeless people. Saturday night, elephant in castle. Me, sleeping bag, three-legged dog. <laughs> you, shopping cart, hair like Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> Me, behind the bins. I'd go just to find out who put that ad in. You know, that was really interesting, you know, why not? Anyway, folks, so I've just been, just back, just flew back from the US, I was just in, LA, where I'm from, and um, it won't be a surprise to you, but it is totally fucked up over there. I mean, it's bad here, but you have no idea. I, seriously, I knew it was gonna be bad. I didn't realize it was gonna be the Hunger Games, but let me tell you, it's fucked up. And it was funny because um, I remember watching, I sort of stopped paying attention, because it's just so bad, and I stopped after the inauguration. Who watched that? Did anyone watch the inauguration? Well, you didn't miss much, friend. It was, it was so dark. It was so, so dark and cynical. And you may or may not remember, but when Beyonce, or when um, Obama... <laughs> she did, well, they're very similar. You never see them in the same room. No, it's, now, wait a minute. It's true, that. It is true. When, when Obama was inaugurated, he had Beyonce, right? Trump had nobody. There was no entertainment at all. And I thought that was a real surprise for Trump. I thought at least there'd be a swimsuit competition. Nothing, right? And I was watching the speech. It was so dark. It was so dark. It was so mean. It was so angry. I thought, Trump, you got to lighten it up. You gotta lie and you know, tell a joke, something. I'm like, here's a great idea. Lead the crowd in a Mexican wave. <laughs> but then I thought again. Probably not a great idea because Donald Trump thinks the Mexican wave is this. Bye bye. <laughs> And you know, Donald Trump has inspired lots of activism from our Hollywood friends. From our, you know, they need to speak out, they need to raise their voice, or they need to raise their voice. All the, all the award shows, they all raise their voice, they raise their voice. I said to myself, you know, it's all great raising your voice, Jennifer Lawrence, but how many of these Hollywood actors have actually opened their homes to Syrian refugees, right? If you think about it, I, you know, and I'm sure Jennifer Lawrence would very happily open her home to a half-blind Syrian war vet and his extended family. But her dog has anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> that would never work. It would never work. And speaking of celebrities, our good friend Meryl Streep was in a movie last year. Perhaps you saw it. Perhaps you saw it. It was called Florence Foster Jenkins. Did you see it, my dear? Did you see it, Florence Foster Jenkins? If you missed it, folks, I would recommend you see it, especially if you're a Meryl Streep fan, because this is Meryl Streep, but in a completely different wig. <laughs> literally, best supporting wig. Best supporting wig. And Hugh Grant is in it, and I'll tell you what, I think this is Hugh Grant's best performance as Hugh Grant yet. <laughs> it's just about the Hugh Grant as Hugh Grant has ever been. Better than all the other Hugh Grants, you know what I mean? Better than Robert Pattinson and Tom Hiddleston. Hugh Grant has really nailed Hugh Grant now. So it was something else, and I got to see it up close because luckily, I am in the film. Now listen, I'm as surprised as you are, because guess the part I play? The play? No, the gay friend. The 
gay friend, right? I mean, that was a surprise. No, let, let me tell you, I don't have friends. So, I, I had to hang around with people with friends just for research. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you got friends, but they're a lot of work. So much lying. Right? But Elizabeth, they had to give me the part, actually. No, they had to give me the part, because here's the thing, if you haven't seen the film, it's about a woman in the U.S., but was filmed here in the U.K., right? So they needed sort of a gay American actor based in London. And the only other gay American actor in town was working five nights a week as waiter number two in Mamma Mia. <laughs> and Scott Capurro was out of town. So, uh, so they gave me the part. But I was lucky, people. I was lucky, because let me tell you, had they cast this in L.A., I never would have got a look at it because every actor in LA is the gay friend, you know what I mean? <laughs> Even the women. So I was lucky, I was lucky, but uh, it really kicked off my 27, 16 and 17, you know? Uh, so I've been having, a, having an interesting 2017. My big thing in 2017, people tell me, you might want to try this actually, you might want to try this, the cloud. No, I'm embracing the cloud. Embracing the no, I am. I'm embracing. Are you in the cloud, friend? Are you in the cloud? Are you in the cloud? You gotta get in the cloud. No, you gotta get in the cloud. That's where it's all at. That the people. That is where it's at. The cloud. That's my thing. The cloud. Everything I'm doing in the cloud. I'm buying my groceries. Boom, into the cloud. I'm booking my travel. Cloud. Right. I'm paying all my bills. Boom, in the cloud. The other day I paid my rent in the cloud. My landlord he called me. He said, Hey, you're two weeks late. Where's your rent? I said, All around you. <laughs> He said, well, wait a minute, it's supposed to be in my bag. I said, well, where's your bag? He said, Croydon. I said, well, there's a problem right there. <laughs> Croydon's not in the cloud. <laughs> it's in the gutter. <laughs> it's great in the cloud. It's great because it is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Right? It's like Sienna Miller's career. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You know Right, you know Sienna Miller, Hollywood actress, right? Name a film she's been in. <laughs> That's the cloud, people. That is the cloud. Right there. There it is. There it is. I said, I said to my boyfriend, you know, I've been with my boyfriend for a long time, and we've been living together for a long time. I said to him, I said, hey, you know what? We've been together for a long time. It's time we move this relationship to the next level. He said, oh, yeah, what's that? I said, that's probably in the cloud. <laughs> He said, well, uh, what does that mean? I said, well, that means going forward, I'm going to be right by your side. <laughs> but you ain't never going to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. So we're in the cloud now. We're in the cloud. It's going to be great for you two, let me tell you. It's going to be great. And then, of course, the other 2017 thing, of course, is Brexit. Good old Brexit, right? You know, I'll tell you what, you people made the wrong choice. Made the right, and I think, as an immigrant myself, because this is going to impact immigration, I'm an immigrant, I think it's going to be negative, Brexit. You know, of course, I would say that. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be bad for the immigrants. I don't even think it's going to be bad for the Brits. Mm -hmm. Because Brits without immigrants? That's not pretty. <laughs> no, no, that's not pretty. Seriously, you kick out the immigrants, you're gonna be rolling cheese down a hill before long. You know what I mean? That's what you do. Literally, you're gonna be strapping bells to your ankles, dancing out in front of car parks in front of clubs. You know what I mean? You're gonna be going into the woods, find a bunch of stones, put them in a circle, and sacrifice your pets. You know that's that's what you do. That's what it is. This, that's your culture, you know? It's, you know, rolling cheese. It's uh, Morris dancing. It's stone circles. And the shipping report. And that's what the Romans found when they got here. And that's what will be here when the immigrants leave. So, that's it. So thrilled you were here for the opening night of the Mix with David Mills at the Phoenix Artist Club. This is going to be a dynamite show. Give yourselves a round of applause. And let's get started, shall we? Here we go. And wait a minute. Check out our fabulous furniture. Donated by Maid. Upstairs.
stairs, yeah, so it's all made by local craftsmen and artists, you know what I mean? It's about to fall apart, but you know, I personally like my furniture made in China, but that's a different story entirely. Let's get to our friend, the Royalist Town Crier, Mr. Tony Appleton, once again. Now, Tony, before we start, uh, this uh, charming little interview. What would you like to drink? Can I get you a drink, Tony? I'm fine. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm yeah. Fine. No. Why would you? Why would you? Not drink? <laughs> I would love a gin martini with a twist. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone. Thank you. That's from Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Stewart. Great, Tony. What a dynamite, dynamite uh, thing you do. How on earth did you end up being a town crier? Well, that's a long, long story. That I Keep it short. I didn't <laughs> I live in a little village called Great Bellow in Chelmsford, Essex, and I'm the lord of the manor of the village. How'd you get to be that? Well, I bought it 25 years ago. Oh, wow. oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm the lord. So I used to dress up in this uh, regalia and open fates. Bit of cosplay. And one day a little boy, <laughs> and I was ringing the bell, and one day a boy came up and he said, Hey, mate, you said you look like a town crier. Mm. So hang on a minute. So three days later, the telephone rang, and the guy said, Tony, I know you're a toastmaster. He said, but you don't know the town crier. I said, yeah, you're talking to one. And that's how it started. Okay. So you sort of appointed yourself a town crier. That's correct. And then uh, done all the practices in the, in the mirror and shouting and, oh yay, oh yay! Brilliant. I could do that for six hours without losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a signature? Are you known for something specific as a town crier as opposed to all the other ones out there? Yeah, well, I've got the, my claim to fame is that so I've announced both of the Royal Babies. Uh, uh, George, the most recent Royal Babies. Uh, uh, Charlotte and Georgia. That was my claim Fantastic. to fame. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And then so that was uh, broadcast around the world, no doubt. And, so, and, and when Charlotte was born, I had inside information before a lot of the media. So I announced it to the world and they couldn't work out. They thought, everybody thought I was from the palace. Right. But I wasn't, no, I just yeah. turned up and done the job. Just some <laughs> kook in a crazy outfit. That's yes, yeah. you know, it. Well, you know, it's so funny what a crazy outfit can get you these days, you know. <laughs> now, he, he'll get you into all sorts of clubs, apparently. <laughs> now, now, Tony, what, what I am interested in is this, the, the history of town crying and sort of what it's about. I imagine at the time it was the Twitter of its day, wasn't it? Well, town crowds come to England in 1066. From where? People didn't know the news. So right. The, so the town crowd was specifically employed by the king to go from town to town, village to village, telling the people what the news was. Raw, right. Royal publications, uh, and, uh, executions, births, everything. That's what the town crowd was. And what sorts of things do you announce now? I know. I work for, for, for announcing your club for a time. Yeah, that's great. But I get employed by lots and lots of companies to go around and it's just direct marketing. You're telling straight away to the public they've got 50% off, Boots, Harrods, you know, this is it. You know. Do you have any 50% offers you can bring tonight? <laughs> I love a little bit of, I love a discount, you know what I mean? But you know what I think is going to be, you know, what you got to watch out for is you're going to, be, before long, one of these alt-right town criers is going to pop up with a bunch of fake news. You know what I mean? Well, oh yeah, oh yeah, Obama took Maddie, things like that, you know? That's what you watch out for. That's, what, that's, you know, you don't worry about that. <laughs> And maybe he did. <laughs> no. Probably not. <laughs> and, and, and do you all get together at the town criers on occasion and sort of uh, share uh, skills and, and, and make sure there's a sort of a standard going on? Well, they have a competition it? every year uh, in, in certain parts of the country. country. But I don't go because uh, I know I'm, I'm better than them, so I don't bother to turn up. Right. <laughs> Now, I hear as well that you are, uh, oh, this is, this is school, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. You're missing out, Tony. Mm. Dynamite. Now, Tony, they say that you are the most photographed man in the UK. That's correct. Yes? Yeah. And who says that other than you? Well, uh... <laughs> I'm the only person uh, that's had four pages in the Daily Mail with a who's that with Tony up with them. That's true story. It, 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 what, what did it say? In the Daily Mail, four pages, who's that with Tony Appleton? Who slept with Tony Appleton? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, who did sleep with Tony Appleton? <laughs> now is it getting good? <laughs> right. Okay, well, listen, Tony very helpfully 
uh, brought along a bit of a, uh, just sort of threw this together, uh, a little bit of a, uh, uh, an album of some of the major celebrities he has appeared with over the years. Here he is with Muhammad Ali. That's right. right. And that, is that you or is that Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> that's well, that's you and Muhammad Ali. And, and what was that occasion? Uh, that was at the um, uh, O2, and uh, Muhammad Ali was pr promoting a, a tape, a, a, a book. And uh, my colleague, who's here tonight, I won't tell you where he is, he arranged a fake press pass for me, and I got in and just went around the back and said, get out of my picture. And they got slung out straight away. <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't specifically town crying at that time. No, 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 no. <laughs> OK. Um, and here you are. <laughs> Explain that who are you with there? Well, that's with Elizabeth Taylor. Taylor. With Liz Taylor. And were you town crying there? <laughs> no, no, no. 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 So you put some sort of celebrity stalker, is what it sounds like. <laughs> she was uh, promoting uh, uh, Little Foxes, and I uh, again, I got in with a fake breast cast, and, uh, and uh, jumped over the banister and presented her with an orchid, which was the same colour as her eyes. Wow. And uh, uh, again, I got slung out, and uh, suddenly uh, all the plants has got the sack. <laughs> and, and who are you with here? Oh, oh, that's Margaret Thatcher. That's Margaret Thatcher, yeah. But, but, but once again, Tony, you're not town crying here either. Right? <laughs> so you just happen to be, sort of separately from your town crier, you happen to also be the most photographed man in the UK. That's my hobby, yeah, that's my hobby. I see. We can bring you back another time without the outfit and just talk about this. That's right. <laughs> that's an interesting thing. Okay, well, let's, let's see who we've got here. Who's here? Oh, Joan Collins. Joan Collins. What's going on there? That looks like that's a film she, still. Again, she was at Wentworth. She, that's when she was going out with, I mean, but, uh, with uh, Biggins, with Biggins, what was that? Bill, Bill, Bill. Christopher Biggins. Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, she landed in style in a helicopter. Uh, my colleague took the pictures. We went and developed got into the celebrity tent and she said, how did it and dumped so quickly? So that was it, yeah. I mean, and who are you with there? Who's that? I have to tell me that one. said Diana Washington, isn't it? What's the name? Uh, Diana what? Uh, Di Diane Carroll. Di anyone, uh, anyone remember Diane, Diane. Carroll? Yes. 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 Again, she was at the celebrity tent, yeah. I think <laughs> From, uh, this must have been a dynasty moment, a little <laughs> dynasty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can't fool me, Tony. <laughs> Um, oh, that's Jeffrey House, or Jeffrey House, or Jeffrey House, Jeffrey House. and that's um, uh, Susan George. She was in Langham, so she didn't want to be seen who she was with. So her boyfriend put a hand over her face. <laughs> so maybe that's Susan George. Maybe it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is fascinating, actually. <laughs> um, and now, what other what other sort of gigs have you got coming up? Oh, I've got lots of, uh, next week. I'm uh, doing a charity in Charing Cross Road for, uh, for a cancer research. And uh, there'll be this big boxing venue, so I should be there as a town and announce it as a tram crime, yeah. Wow, amazing. So mostly that's your work now. You're not so much doing the celebrity stuff. I'm still doing that now again if I know so much attend. Be careful. Right. Right. Well, right. I'm going to keep my eye out. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Apple. Thank, Thank you so much for coming down. And we can find you online, can we? And what's your, what's your website? Uh, it's uh, www.englishtowncryer.co.uk. Check them out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Uh, just, one, just one thing, I just wrote a book. It's called Now or Never. You can get it on Amazon for seven ninety nine. Fantastic. Okay. Tony Appleton. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll hang on to this and give this to you in the break. Is that okay? Great. Make way, people, make way. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The town cry. <laughs> I don't know where he gets it. People, <laughs> this continues, our exciting show continues. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a little break, look at what the, the magic of technology here. And I know this looks like something out of, you know, the, you know some cave in the 50s or something, but they've kitted it out with all the latest technology. I love it. And uh, what we're going to do is watch a little bit of a YouTube clip from uh, probably the biggest YouTube sensation, YouTube sensation in the UK at the moment, and our next guest, uh, Mr. Jonathan Pye. <laughs>
dance